Welcome to Culturally Spanish. Hola, this is Español Lesson 14. Let's revise the forms of estar. I am translates to yo estoy. Try that, please. Yo estoy. We are becomes nosotros estamos. Did you get that? Nosotros estamos. Informally, for singular contexts, you are becomes tú estás. Can you try that? Tú estás. And informally, its plural form, or you all are, becomes vosotros estáis. Say that, please. Vosotros estáis. Good. Moving on, he is or she is, or formally you are, translate as él or ella está, or usted está. Can you try the translation for he is? It is él está. Great. Similarly, try she is. She is becomes ella está. Now looking at their plural forms, they are or formally you all are become ellos or ellas están. Or ustedes están. So try the translation for you all are in a formal context. It is ustedes están. Here's a quick revision of the phrases we learned in the last lesson. Informally, how are you is como estás. Its reply, I am fine, becomes estoy bien. Can I smoke? Translates to puedo fumar. The reply, yes, becomes sí. Where is the toilet? Translates to ¿Dónde está el baño? Great! Today we learn about definite and indefinite articles. We will learn the difference between definite and indefinite articles and their usage in Spanish. So let's get started. The difference between definite articles and indefinite articles can be observed in the following two sentences. Give me the red pen and give me a pen. Now, imagine a box full of pens with a blue, green, black, and one red pen. So when we say, give me the red pen, we are referring to a particular pen. While the sentence, give me a pen, could refer to any pen. Thus, the difference between definite articles and indefinite articles is that definite articles, like the, are associated with specific or particular items while indefinite articles, like a and an, may refer to any item. In English, the is used as a definite article regardless of gender or count that is singular or plural. Let's look at some examples. The woman, the women, the man, the men. As you see, regardless of the gender or count, we use the as the definite article. In Spanish, however, the definite article, the, has four forms. Let's take some examples. El gato means the male cat, while los gatos means the male or mixed cats, referring to a group. Taking another example, la gata implies the female cat, while las gatas means the female cats, again referring to a particular group of female cats. Thus, in Spanish, the forms of the definite article the vary based on gender and count. Let's learn these forms. With masculine noun in singular form, the translates to el. Try that, please. El. While with masculine or mixed nouns in plural forms, the becomes los. Can you say that, please? Los. Moving on to the feminine forms, with feminine nouns in singular form, we use la. Say that, please. La. While with feminine nouns in plural form, we use las. One more time. Las. Great. 
the masculine plural definite article los is also used to indicate a group of mixed gender. Thus, los gatos could refer to a group of three male cats, or it could refer to a group of two female cats and one male cat. Good. Let's look at the definite articles in Spanish again. With masculine noun in singular form, the translates to el. Try that, please. El. While with masculine or mixed nouns in plural forms, the becomes los. Can you say that, please? Los. Moving on to the feminine forms, with feminine nouns in singular form, we use la. Say that, please. La. While with feminine nouns in plural form, we use las. One more time. Las. Very good. Time for a quick quiz. How will you translate the books? Hint. Books translates as libros and takes up masculine gender. Will you say el libros or los libros or will it be las libros? The books translates to los libros. Remember, libros is plural and masculine. Hence, we use los. Great! Now try the magazine. Hint, magazine is revista, and it takes up feminine gender. So will it be el revista, or la revista, or is it las revista? The magazine becomes la revista. Since revista is feminine and singular, we use la. Great! We saw earlier that nouns in Spanish take up either masculine or feminine gender. We noted that masculine forms usually end in O, for example, libro or book, and feminine in E, for example, revista or magazine. And for plural forms, we add an S at the end. Remember these rules as these will help you identify the gender of the noun and thus the form of the articles to use with it. Good. Now let's look at the indefinite articles. In English, we use a, an, and some for indefinite articles. Let's look at some examples. A book, an egg. Some books, some eggs. Note that the word some is used as a functional plural of a, an. In Spanish, the indefinite articles have four forms, depending on whether the noun is masculine, feminine, singular, or plural. For example, un gato is used to refer to a male cat, while unos gatos is for some male or mixed cats. Moving on, una gata means a female cat, while unas gatas is used to refer to some female cats. Thus, the forms change depending on the gender and the count. Let's look at these forms in detail. With masculine or mixed noun in singular form, a or an translate as un. Try saying that, please. Un. While with masculine or mixed nouns in plural form, it becomes unos. Note that with plural nouns, we use some in English, which translates to unos in Spanish. Looking at the feminine forms, with feminine nouns in singular form, a or an translate to una. Try saying that, please. Una. While with feminine nouns in plural form, we use unas. Again, with plural forms, we use some in English, which translates to unas for feminine forms in Spanish. So un and una for singular forms, and unos and unas for plural forms. Great! Note that un or una can refer to one, or a, or an. For example, one book translates to un libro, while as we saw, a book is also un libro. Similarly, one magazine becomes una revista, which is the same as a magazine, again, which translates to una revista. 
All right, some more quizzes for us. How will you translate some books? Will you say un libros or unos libros or unas libro? Some books translates to unos libros. Did you get that right? Remember that books or libros is plural and takes up masculine form. Thus, we use unos libros. Great! Now try translating a pen. Hint, pen translates as pluma. So, will a pen become una pluma or un pluma or unos pluma? A pen is una pluma. We use the singular and feminine form of a, una. How will you translate some eggs? Hint, eggs is translated to huevos and takes up masculine gender. So will we say unas huevos or un huevos or unos huevos? Is it the first or the second, or the third. Some eggs is unos huevos, where some becomes unos, as eggs are masculine and plural. Very good. Now try the translation for an egg. Will it be una huevo, or el huevo, or un huevo? What do you think the answer is? An egg becomes un huevo. Very good. Let's revise what we learned today. Let's look at the definite article the first. With masculine noun in singular form, the translates to el. While with masculine or mixed nouns in plural forms, the becomes los. Moving on to the feminine forms, with feminine nouns in singular form, we use la while with feminine nouns in plural form, we use las. One more time. Las. Great! Let's now look at the indefinite articles. With masculine or mixed noun in singular form, a or an translate as un. Try saying that, please. Un. While with masculine or mixed nouns in plural form, it becomes unos. Note that with plural nouns, we use some in English, which translates to unos in Spanish. Looking at the feminine forms, with feminine nouns in singular form, a or an translate to una. Try saying that, please. Una. While with feminine nouns in plural form, we use unas. Again, with plural forms, we use some in English, which translates to unas for feminine forms in Spanish. So, un and una for singular forms, and unos and unas for plural forms. Great! All right, the fun part is here again. It's time for our culture leaf of the day. Today, we will talk about National Day. Spain's National Day is held on the 12th of October the day celebrated in other countries as Columbus Day or Dia de la Raza and commemorates the anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival in the Americas. A military parade is held in Madrid celebrating the occasion. In the next lesson, we will learn some common expressions of time. We hope you enjoyed your lesson today. See you at the alley for the next one.